So do you have an e-bike that maybe just doesn't have enough pep for you? Maybe is just a little slow? Well, you are in luck today because we're going to change out the stock controller on our DYU. So if you have been following along with this little DYU fun bike that I got for $300 off a of Wish, you know that I have just been itching to replace some components. And this is the stock controller that used to be in here. And while it wasn't too bad, let's be honest, it really did not have any torque. I did open it up. I did a little hacking as shown in the last video where I added on a little shunt resistor so that we can get more torque out of it, but it still wasn't giving me the performance that I wanted. So that tells me that we've got some hard limiting in here that I really cannot reprogram. And what we need to do is essentially just put on a new speed controller for the motor. Now, I will say that the MOSFETs that they included in here were not so bad. They were about 6.5 milliohm, something from ST. Um, I can't quite read it, but uh, they're like a 68 volt jobber. This is a TO220 uh, MOSFET die size, really good for an e-bike. This will keep things from overheating. Really solid package all in all. If you kept it stuck, I don't think you would have any problems, but I typically don't leave things stuck. What I have done is had some custom speed controllers made for me, and we based these off of the IRF 4110 MOSFET. These are 3.5 milliohms, about half the on resistance of our stock controller, and also uh, just kind of a beefier package. It's the same TO220 setup, but we have a larger bus bar in here, or whatever you would call it, basically a heat spreader and a little bit larger controller size. Now, when you change out your controller, um, in this case, I custom programmed it to 20 amps on the battery side, 60 amps on the phase side to at least get us started. But then after that, you really have to uh, spend some time, let's say, to figure out your new combinations of phase and hall sensors. And this could go for really anything in the world. Any sort of brushless motor that you're ho hooking a new brushless speed controller up to, you could follow the same steps to get it hooked up. So the parts that you will need to switch out your controller, obviously a new controller. You will also need to make sure that your throttle is compatible with the controller. I would also highly recommend an amp meter. This is a clamp meter, a Fluke 374, which will do DC or pulse DC amperage. And this way I can just clamp it onto my battery wire and I can read out my amperage on there. And the reason for this, at least if you're getting a controller that isn't plug and play, is to figure out which combination out of the 36 is proper. So if we think about there being three wires on here that we need to connect to, there are six different combinations of wire that we can have. Let's say that here's our uh, you know, stagnant wire and then we switch these two. So we have this one plugged in over here and then we flip these two. And then we put this one in the middle, we put these in and then we flip these two. And then last we put this on the end, we start these two phases and then we flip those two phases. Those are our six combinations on the phase wires. We also have the same six combinations on the hall sensor wires. And it turned out for this controller mating to this hub motor that we had to have the green wires matched on the hall sensor wire and the, let's see, oh, I'm sorry, the blue wires matched on the hall sensor wire and the green wires matched on the phase wires. And that's just, you know, happened to be how it lined up. It could have been three random combinations and three random combinations, but I did get lucky and I found the right combination after, oh, well, I think it was maybe eight tries. So eight out of 36, I was doing pretty good. Usually it's the very last combination that we find. I should note out of the 36 possible combinations, only one will run properly in forwards rotation and only one will run properly in reverse rotation. If you have a geared hub motor, you won't get the reverse rotation because of your freewheel just won't let it do anything. Maybe you can hear it spinning on the inside. But out of the 36 combinations, you only get one that works properly. You may get some that roll in the proper direction, but your amp draw will be extremely high and you will end up smoking either your motor or your motor speed controller. So I highly recommend you get either a clamp meter or an inline multimeter and be extremely gentle on the throttle just so you don't smoke components. 
However, if I can get this working and tuned right, what I'll probably do is end up uh, just selling these controllers ready to go if anybody wants them. All right, so I'm just gonna show you what I did once I got this all set up. We're, I'm gonna zero out my clamp meter, give us uh, zero amps on there, put it around the positive or the negative lead, it doesn't matter for a clamp meter. Then we plug in our controller and hope it doesn't run away. It didn't. Have you ever been working on your e-bike and had it run away from you? Fortunately, it didn't jump off the table today, but it might next time. And now, since I have a nice stand, I can just kind of lean this guy up a little bit, make sure the bike doesn't run off the table, and we give her a little bit of throttle. And we want to ease into it. You always want to ease into it when you're trying a new combination. Otherwise, you can smoke things. And not the good type of things, either. All right, so it's sounding nice and smooth. That's a really good first start. All right, so let's go to full throttle. So no load. We are seeing 0 0.7, 0 0.6 amps DC on there. That's an extremely low, no load for 36 volts. I think I would consider this a good combination. And I also have a little bit of uh, e-brake programmed in this controller. So as you can see, it slows down nice and fast. There we go. Now, what next? I've got this new controller hacked in. It doesn't really look like we got any extra speed though. So next for me is going to be getting a 72 volt battery on here. So we got some pep. But before I do that, I want to see how much more torque this has. But as you can see, I've got this real janky setup to where I just basically shoved some soldered wires right into this plug on the controller. So I'm going to need to actually solder those together and make sure it is a nice connection that is not going to fail on me because as you can see we have two different plug styles and I have to adapt them. Unfortunately I did not have the proper style on this side to make myself a full adapter so I didn't have to solder. So say la vie this controller will just be dedicated for this motor. So that is going to be our next step. Have you ever modified your DYU? Let me know in the comments. So how fast would you say is too fast for this little bitty bike? Is 36 volts enough or do you think you would go to 72 volts too? We are outside on this nice fall day and going to test out our new programming and new controller on this DYU. As you can see, it's a hacked up mess right now, but it is insulated, it is safe, and at least on the bench testing, everything seems fine. I have my aftermarket throttle, I have the aftermarket controller, and uh, really nothing more to do but to test her out. But first let's see, does she actually have more throttle or torque? Oh yeah, if she wouldn't do this before. Uh, so right now I am running 20 amp limit on the phase, I'm sorry, 20 amp limit on the battery side, and I bumped it to 80 amp limit on the phase to give myself a little bit more torque. Let's see how she does on 36 volts with stock battery. I'm assuming that the stock battery is really not going to give a whole lot more, but yeah, we'll just see. I notice it's a little louder with this controller. Oh yeah, so fast. So it's about the same speed, but it gets up to speed. Pretty much right away. Oh, and it's got a nice brake function too. Very nice brake function. Well, we have certainly gained a lot more low-end torque on this, but it's not quite as good as I want. Feels a little gutless, which I imagine is probably just having a very slow wind of motor on only 36 volts. So we cannot get any more out of the controller, no matter how much we program more, more amperage into it more 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 so the only thing left to do now is to add more voltage which means that the stock battery pack is unfortunately going away however there is enough room if we take out all that interior crap to put a 72 volt battery in there or at least a 52 volt battery in there so that's what we are going to do next if you'd like to see something else done to the bike leave the comments down below and i'll see if i can get to it otherwise it's going to be faster battery and then chop this guy down real low.
so my nuts are closer to the battery in case it catches fire, right? Safety first. That way we'll know that the fire is happening quicker, right? Yeah. All right. So I bid you adieu. Thanks for tuning in.